Let's look at DN. For a DN is not DN, but we need more DN. <laughs> What's up? It's your boy Central. Come back and do another analysis video. I kid you not, that's a real name. And man, today we're looking at a position that when I looked at it, at its you know face value, I was like, damn, we're lighter here than we need to be. So it means we gotta fucking retool this offseason. Let's get into it. So first we'll look here at Josh Sweat, who has Obviously, there you go. He's an instant stay. Um, he's on a contract for I think maybe three more seasons. He signed a four-year extension with I think like forty million dollars or something like that. Um, but you know, it was just before he got big. But every season he's gotten better. Zero sacks his first season, four, then six, seven and a half, then eleven this past season. And uh, he also had a six, um, a pick six, off of Dak Prescott. Appreciate you, Dak, for the uh, <laughs> charity <laughs> work. Um, but yeah, he's progressively, progressively gotten better each and every year. And, um, yeah, he just, he's, he got set up for the Pro Bowl this year, he made it last year, which is, you know, eh, neither here nor there now, but, um, still an improving player and he hasn't showed any signs of peaking yet. So, um, still a good investment, you know, very good investment. You know, he's a fourth round pick coming out of Florida State, Florida State, Florida State, woo! Um, in 2017, 2018, 2018 draft. Uh, 2017 draft maybe because no 2018 draft but um yeah it, it would just stay you know a, a very uh good good uh signing good scouting speed guy who you know slowly developed um during his time in the league got better each and every year improved not just you know in statistical sacks category every year but um continue continue to develop his game not just you know a one-trick pony could turn uh, speed into power and power into speed you know lanky very tall lanky guy but um man he gets the job done and i, I would say he's feared out there on the edge but he's very well respected so um a, a good hit you know you want to hit on your later round picks and you know, for them that develop into starters like this you know it's just that's you know the dream but um glad to have him on our, on our defense and definitely we need him moving forward Let's move to the next guy, Brandon Graham. This is one's a complicated one. Um, his contract actually is finished, but he has voidable years on the contract, so we actually still owe money and have to cut him proper to keep you know those numbers from triggering and the contract value from escalating. But we still have you know dead cap cap money due to him. But you know he's thirty five, coming off of uh, his thirteenth pro season, and he still wants to play a fourteenth. And there's a place for him on the spot on his um, on the squad if he wants to you know take a you know a hometown discount. Don't know if he will because you know he's just coming off a three year you know the real numbers the three year forty million dollar contract that he signed, and uh, you know he was paid you know handsomely at the time, and um, we're not going to resign him for anywhere close to that number. Five six million would be a good number to uh, to resign him on, but who knows if he takes a cut like that because he's still you know worth something on the open market he could go somewhere and uh maybe not compete but get money or, or stay here and compete but not get as much money as he would on the open market so we'll see what he does but you know he only played 50 percent of the snaps but you know 11 sacks you, you know he first time he crossed double digit numbers got close uh closest thing nine and a half the uh, year we went to the super bowl but i mean just a talented player it's not all about sacks but he just he's such a strong stout guy he's built like a bear you look at him he looks like a Wolverine when he's in his, you know, uh, four, uh, when he's on all fours on the, on the stance. Pause. Um, but yeah, he's just a, um, an exemplary pick of ours. Took some time to develop, you know, towards, I think it's ACL the first year. Um, and towards Achilles the year before, you know, this year, 2021, came back even better than ever, you know, which is a, you know, miracle at 34, like, man, crazy. And, um, just a guy, you know, you want to, you know, rah, rah guy, but he backs up his, can um, talk and walk in that shit. So, you know, a guy anyone would love to have in the locker room. If, he, if he's not on your team, he talks, he talks shit, though, so especially before the um, the coin toss this year. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, he doesn't mean anything bad, spiteful with it. You know, he's just talking himself up, you know, um, and getting in the opponent's head. See you in my head, Charles. Get out. <laughs> but, you know, just a stellar player, still in the twilight of his career. You know, he's making plays here, you know, here, there, and everywhere. Uh, highlight being, I think, against the Colts, he's switched sides to uh, get on um, a backup lineman and uh, made the sack. 
and just, you know, fought through the block. It was just excellent work there, you know. Um, hey, you beat up on um, big people, big people beat up on small people. Hey, I'm, I'm not mad at you for, you know, um, picking your spots and choosing. All right, so um, you know, but I, stay or go. It, it's touch and go. I would have to say stay, but that could be on the sentimental tip because who knows if he takes less money. That's the key factor. All right, next here. So, I mean, beyond that, we have Derek Barnett. The demand I don't even want to mention. This dude had eight penalties in, in 2021. And I didn't even notice, but, you know, Nick uh, Sirianni, after he got a certain one in the game, he was like, it's him again? It's always him. I'm like, damn, that's that's a damning indictment on you by your fucking head coach. You know, he had 20, two and a half sacks. I was like, 20 and a half, hell no. He ain't nowhere close to that. Even in his career, he only has 19. Two and a half sacks versus eight penalties. It's just not worth the fucking headache. I don't realistically see why we, you know, we signed him um, any, you know, for any other reason than depth. But I would rather us go out and, you know, have gotten a failed player. I mean, it was fortuitous, you know, unfortunate for him. But um, he didn't play beyond the second game towards ACL. And I did, he was not missed at all out there on the field. So signed a two-year contract for like 14 million I'm like why the fuck are we wasting money we still owe him we're actually you know it's, it's like a, a, a wife cheaper to keep her it's actually cheaper to keep him this year and cut him it's like oh get him off the fucking roster don't want him there but they you know they have to you know how he this is one bad thing about him he loves to validate you know those draft picks you know doesn't want to you know cop to that you know cop to the fact that he wasted draft capital spending a first round pick 14th overall um on this guy coming out of Tennessee. And yeah, we thought he would be something when he proved that he was not, you know, cut your losses and, you know, cut bait. But, you know, we, we were hanging on to him for, you know, um, you know, for the fact that he could be Brandon Graham. He could, you know, prove himself. I, you know, a Tiger doesn't easy, so easily change their stripes. And this guy is not going to start stop being a penalty machine. So uh, it's just a walking mistake waiting to happen. Immature. And he's a selfish guy because, you know, you commit those kind of penalties after the, the play. Type penalties is just fucking dumb, man. But, you know, he's, he's a liability. Um, so, stay or go. He stays, but I wish he would go. Uh, Robert Quinn is easy. Um, man who had 18 and a half sacks just a season ago with Chicago. Um, set a franchise record for them and, and also a franchise, franchise record for the Rams. I think it was like 19, maybe 19 and a half. Um, he's going to go because we're not going to be able to afford him. Uh, he voided years on his deal to get back to free agency. Didn't you know show up for uh, show, us, show up for us the way you wanted? I mean that we were stacked. No, you know, not really anybody's fault there, because um, you know we, when you saw him work, rushing the passer uh, versus the Giants, I think maybe in the playoffs. Man, he he was bending that corner, but he just couldn't get there. Um, maybe he could have had a couple sacks, or whatever. But he had zero for us, so eh, it was it was a gamble. Fourth round pick gone, but you know. I'd rather have taken a chance, you know, on that potential that he had rather than not, you know, thank you for this, your service, but like Sue and, um, and live all Joseph, you know, deuces, you want me back, but you will be, you know, appreciated for what you gave to the franchise this year. So, uh, moving on to the next guy, Janarius Robinson is here's where we dip into the potential, um, debate, not even a potential debate, but it's a potential debate. Um, fourth round pick out of, again, Florida State, Florida State, Florida State, and again, fourth round pick. Uh, we love these guys, but the Vikings originally drafted him. We just picked him up off a of waiver wire, you know, decided to take a chance on his potential. He's like, you know, like, um, kind of like, you know, a um, specimen as far as, like, you know, the size, um, measurables. But um, he has yet to play in a regular season game. So, or I think, you know, if he has, it, it hasn't been, uh, he hasn't registered any stats. But we're just purely going off his athleticism and uh, his size. So, Eh, you know, we, we don't know what we're getting. So we'll, we'll keep him, obviously, stay. But, you know, depth um, signing. We don't have any big guys. And with uh, Brandon Graham possibly being, you know, leaving, we need to draft another guy. So next to Ron Jackson. Yeah, decent guy. But he, he's, he's, he's just, a, you know, a backup. He'll be in camp. So a light stay, light commitment. But, you know, he could be, you know, replaced with the, you know, um, a talent uh, that's above his either free agency or the draft so there's not nothing really you know to uh, look at big here he's just uh he's a jag at this point just another guy and that 
ends the the end evaluation for us but we're going to jump into some things across the league um potential number one over overall pick but uh definitely a highly talented touted um guy from uh georgia that um that's what always says we're winning that um national championship winning squad jalen carter former teammate of current um dn for us i mean dn d tackle um jordan davis was um it, he hasn't been arrested but he's um has warrants out for him so they please want to question him because he uh might be charged with reckless driving um don't know if he was intoxicated but his teammate definitely was and his you know um blood alcohol limit was like 0.154 so i mean i think it's like maybe that's like twice the legal limit or something like that and um he he um unalived himself with reckless driving you know crashed the car and uh Jalen was in uh, Jalen Carter was in another car um but he was he put himself in those circumstances so they don't want to talk to him this is obviously going to make his draft slot uh stock <laughs> slip a little bit um do we invest in him regardless of the charges because I mean of course he's going to feel guilt racked you know um for being involved with something like this, just even on the face value, even if he wasn't directly involved with, you know, driving the car. He wasn't driving in that car. He was in another vehicle. But, you know, someone that lost their life, that, that's permanent. You can't unmake that decision. You can't go back and, and, and undo that. Now, this isn't funds. This isn't, um, what do you call it, property. This is someone's life who, you know, permanently gone. Um, so, you know, he, if he's a human being with, you know, half of a conscience, he feels bad for it. Um, but they're going to evaluate his character with this. Who truly is the man? Is it the guy we saw on the field? And, you know, I'm sure he you know, probably did some things off the field that, you know, were charitable um, and that speak to um, his, his character, maybe as, you know, the people closest to him know him. And then there's a the guy that we, you know, we see involved in this incident who's wanted by the police for questioning and uh, might be brought up on criminal charges. And that, you know, definitely not something that a franchise wants to be associated with. But will we still take a risk on him? Because the talent is immense. It, you know, it's there. Um, that is a question I'm glad I don't have to answer. It's, it's you know, for Howie. Would I be sick or, you know, disgusted by drafting him? No. Um, will I question it and, and, and uh, wonder if there, you know, there's going to be any scrutiny moving forward as far as, like, how he carries himself and um, if this life event really affected him has he learned from it from it has he gr grown from it yes I'll, I'll put that under the microscope because you don't want someone like you know like this is not the henry ruggs incident but you know still it being you know someone else someone in that in that um in the situation ha ha having you know fatally been you know uh, injured in you know in, in, a, in a car crash the parallels on on uh, just the surface level are there, so just something you want to be aware of, you know. This guy and then people are like, oh man, like I just I'm like, people are like, oh man, he's gonna slip to us. And just that's like, that's not the first thing that comes to mind. So it's just like, uh, I mean, this is bigger than football, but I mean, if it, it affects his draft value. But that being said, like it's not like some like fortuitous thing. I'm just like, oh well, man, he can slip to us. Because he'd have to slip a hell of a lot, you know, for us, for him to get a 10. It could happen, but, you know, it's just one of those things where it just, it just, it just happened. And it's just um, something to take into consideration. But, you know, I, I'm not going to put it as a headliner or anything like that. It is what it is. All right, next. <laughs> On to another eagle. Um, or, oh, wow. Um, I was speaking into existence that Jalen Carr is going to be eagle. No. All right, I misspoke there, but you know, maybe you can see the heart of what I mean. I take him, like I said, tremendous guy. Um, CJ Garner Johnson takes Twitter shots at Jonathan Gannon, the former um, Eagles D coordinator and now Arizona Cardinals head coach. He put it frankly, and what I've been debating on people on um, Master debating on um, YouTube comments and stuff like that. This is coming from the NFL player himself, an NFL player himself. So the guy who's on that field, who's, you know, um, next to a guy that had a headset, receiving the calls. 
he said Jonathan Gannon did not put them in situations, in a position to win the game. So, I mean, it's coming straight from the horse's mouth in this example. You can't refute it. You can't say that it didn't happen. You can't um, try to have a re revisionist history here or just, you know, try to undermine the argument. He's directly telling you that their head coach, I mean, their head coach, their, their, their head guy on defense calling plays did not put together a game plan to make them successful. And, like, you look at it, they are playing soft coverage. How in the hell are you going to react to plays when you're, you're – too far away to get to the guy and people are like oh well you know you gotta that's on them they gotta go out there and make plays if that's the way the defensive coordinator is calling the game what are you what is he gonna do if he sees you directly disobeying his his instructions his order basically a play that he's called and designed you know for whatever reason whatever reason that doesn't matter he called it you execute it the way he asked Guess what happens if you don't execute it the way he asked for it? He'll remove your ass off the field and get you out of there. That's called mutiny. This ain't a goddamn shit with pirates on it. Pirates of the Caribbean. They'll throw you out there, you know, into the, you know, the murky waters. And uh, you'll be shivering your timbers while the sharks are circling you. A.K.A. your career going down the fucking drain. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. People say that we're going to come out here and make plays. How? When you're not calling the plays. And if you audible them, he'll get your ass out of there too. So, I mean... At the end of the day, he designed that defense to play the way he wanted them to. You instruct. If you instruct somebody, you teach them, you have authority there. I mean, it just it's plain and simple. So put the bed, put the bed, you know, put the rest of these, you know, rumors, you know, this this felonious talk about um it being on anyone other than the head the head coach. I keep saying the head coach, but the um the D coordinator. His defense, his shoulders. That's where the responsibility and the fault lies. All right, moving on to another issue. This, I'm, I'm going to done with the Super Bowl after this. Um, the side father, um, the 94-year-old who had worked with the NFL, I think last maybe 20, 30 years plus, you know, whatever, on um, the NFL, you know, fields, the turf, blasted the NFL the head director of field, you know, uh, field director on that, on that turf that they put out there. He plainly and purely states the fact that he says it was not safe to play on that. Shit. So there you go. There you go. People said that, you know, didn't have an effect, you know, just, just play the game. And I heard this idiot chiefs, this chiefs idiot fan talking about, um, Oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, like the NFL, you play during, you know, during whatever, uh, conditions rain sleet snow that was an unnatural field you somebody made that field purposely made it to you know or, or made a mistake to be in the to yeah you know, in those conditions that is not naturally occurring like that is it was designed to be like that so i mean like that that, that just that looks bad why do you think the nfl you know has put out a blanket statement and are ducking and dodging you know like um discussing the issue because they know they fucked up royally with it um he says the field was stinking and it was rotten like jordan my lot said it himself he says like you couldn't anchor in on the field you had to step lightly if you were stepping lightly that means that you don't even you're not even in full control of your faculties which we saw like you know eagles player uh, players slipping uh you know slipping inside out there if you can't apply pressure to the field you're not gonna be able to run at even like close to maybe like not even up to like maybe like eighty percent capacity, which you know you need to be have a good rush. I'd probably say at least eighty percent, maybe sixty percent. That's light rush, and that gives a favor to the people that you're coming into contact with. They can just ink, you know, like um, ink, hunker down, wait for you to crash them, and then just play off of that when your momentum is killed. And then you have to, like, rebuild it up after that contact. There's no moves to be made or second name moves to be made off of that. Spins, rips, whatever. It's dead. So, I mean, like, you want to refute it? Go and watch the video for yourself. Go and watch the board yourself or highlights. So, I mean, it's just, it's insane. The guy said, he himself says it wasn't safe. And, you you know, you put people out there, but they want that field to look good for aesthetic purposes. Fuck out of here, man.
<clears throat> All right. Next. Um, Kenneth Gainwell. He's being touted as uh, Howie Roseman as the lead back. Come on now. Um, will he have a part to play? Of course. He might be the, the senior um, statesman. Um, the other statesman there in the backfield now. Um, with all of two season pro seasons behind him. We don't know if we're bringing Boston Scott back. Miles Sanders might walk in free agents because he might get more money elsewhere and just price himself out of Philadelphia. And uh, my best bet, my advice, even though it's worth nothing because I'm just a fan, would be to take a rookie running back, high or not. But there's, you know, 13 or so with a, at least a third-round grade, which is a starter um, level grade in the NFL, um, you know, on them in the draft, which is excellent. You know, one of the deepest uh, drafts running back tight end um, corners that we've seen in, in recent history. So um, go out there and get this man some help. And it, I, you know, I would say get a lead back and then have him stay in the number two position. Simple. All right. Mike McCarthy set the call plays, and he's call, he calls it the most fun he's had in Big D. <laughs> this is just a joke, man. Uh, everybody knows that, you know, traditionally speaking, it puts a lot of pressure. It's strenuous to make, uh, to have a head coach calling plays, double dipping as a you know, play caller and managing the team. They're not going to be able to, you know, focus on that, that, uh, that former part, um, in a lot of part, managing the team, and it's going to be, de to, you know, detriment of the team. Um, it just puts a lot of responsibility on one guy's shoulders and um, doesn't allow him to, like, he's head coach of not just the offense or, or the defense of the whole squad. I would say maybe it's even, I'll, maybe it's, eh, it could be easier to do on the defensive side, but with, definitely with offense, it's just, it's complicated. It, um, it multiplies a lot of your, you know, your, 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 um, your task and, 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 and workload and, and assignment. Um, and yeah, I just think like if you look at most people, I, I'm not saying that he can't do it, but it just really um, complicates things. And it's, it's, it's like I said, historically looking at it, it you it's hasn't it hasn't been successful for the um, majority of people who've done it. So take that for what it's worth. But uh, I, I laugh at it. So, because, you know, Dallas, go ahead and do it. I want to see you implode. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> cry. Cowboys cry. And a last, oh, one of the last, second last thing we'll get to here. Uh, Sean decided defensive scheme in flux, according to Howie. And this better be the fucking case. He's saying you can go look at Chicago, you can go look at Seattle, you know, both his stints there in different roles. But, you know, that won't necessarily give you a bead on what we're going to do with the scheme wise, you know, scheme wise we're going to try to keep it hidden but you know we can you know pretty much speculate mostly what it's going to be he might give us some three four looks um which you know we kind of did technically with that you know a five man front that uh, was kind of a uh a pseudo you know 34 front with the, the personnel we had lined up and the way we aligned them um just to the offensive line but I mean, it, we. I don't think they're gonna make a wholesale switch to a, to a three four. We're gonna go with most of the pieces that we have intact, and that would be just a reset to have those guys relearn roles. When, um, how he also said schematically, they do some. We do. He he does some things. Sean Desai does that are similar to what you know we already had in place with with Gannon. So they're gonna keep those components, but also add things to the mix. But he better have adjustments. He better add in a blitz element and uh, disguise coverages. Um, as well as just be aggressive and um, pre snap, post snap, have, you know, like just shuffling. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm, my hopes aren't high, they're low as hell. And uh, we're going to see what we get. But yeah, it, it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is not the, the ideal pick I would have gone with, you know, for decoding. But we got what we got now. And I'm not saying, like, hey, we'll get behind them 100%. Cause I'm a fan. I'm not a douche. But, um, I will be, you know, holding your feet to the fucking fire. When you fuck up, I'm going to be like, you fucked up. If he doesn't, well, I'll praise you. But I'm holding, I mean, until the last snap of the season, I'm going to be a doubter. Because I already have an idea of what, you know, preconceived notion of what I, you know, of you in my mind. You have to prove that wrong because it's, you know, you, you know, um, the best 
indicator of future success is, you know, the past. So I'm going to look at what you did and you're going to have to, you know, uh, fight against that history. All right. Last thing we'll get to here. DeMar Hamlin likely to be cleared and um, the coordinator, uh, Leslie Flazier, Flazier, <laughs> Blaze, Frazier is taking in 2023 off. Um, man, you know, I love seeing this guy back. Um, and, you know, him making that reckless recovery. Shout out, kudos to the guys on the field out there that saved his life literally when he was like pretty much um, deceased on the field. But um, he's going to go check out two or three specialists and hopefully you'll know, get confirmation that he's moving in the right direction and, and be clear to uh, resume his career. Shout out to him. You know, if he wants to resume it, by all means, do it. If you're safe, doctors say that, you know, emphatically, then go ahead and do that. But um, on to the D coordinator. You know, this is a huge loss for them. Sean McDermott, he's not in the lurch here because he w made his bones before. Um, he was D coordinator in Philly uh, for, I think, a season. Um, study, you know, about Jim Johnson. Didn't, you know, couldn't live up to it. But, you know, I believe, you know, we gave up to on him too early. But, you know, it's neither here nor there now. Turns out he's, he's a pretty good coach there in, uh, in Buffalo. But um, he has that experience, and he, you know, he can get the job done. Um, like I said, but double dipping, it, it's always, you know, comes with a risk. I don't know what they're going to do to mitigate that. Not my problem. Um, but I assume they probably, you know, maybe have some assistance or something like that to take the pressure off his shoulders if need be. But, you know, um, he might be half in, half out. You know, if it's a decor, if it's the guy um, who takes over those duties struggles, then he might step in. But I don't think they'll be that much worse for the wear, so. And on that note, we're going to get up out of here. Long ass video, but you're not even watching though, so it's all good. Fly, Eagles, fly, and let's motherfucking go! Thanks for watching. Check me out at Cintron, Cintron Anime, Cintron Life, or Cintron Laughs. Or other social media.